Yeah. All right. So. Oh, that's right, right? Is it? Yeah. So now, rather than just having unlimited solutions, like adding 2 pi or adding pi, now we have a constraint. It has to be within kind of our, our constraint of our circle. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me just ask you, if we forgot about our cosines, and I just said x cubed equals x, and I said find the value of x, right? Well, if you guys remember kind of your rules for solving for x, one thing you need to do is get the x's all on the same side, right? You can't have x's on a different side and solve for it. So first thing I do is I get the x's on the same side, and I have x cubed minus x. Then we can work on equals Sorry, equals zero. Right? When you're solving for x, when you're solving for any value, you got to make sure they're on the same side. Then, if you can't solve them by using algebraic terms, the next thing you could do is look to factoring, right? What If I can factor out, what can I factor out here? I can factor out an x that give me x squared minus one equals zero. Now, you guys see how we can solve this? So x equals 0, and then x squared minus 1 equals 0. So for these next set of problems, if you guys start getting like stuck, forget about the trick. That's just making it more difficult for you. But the math is going to be exactly the same. Okay, So I would just forget about the trig values and just factor it so you can see how you factor it yourself. So to do this problem, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to, get, I'm going to subtract a cosine of x on both sides. So now it makes sense why I do that, right? Rather than just me saying, oh, just put the cosine on the other side. So you have cosine cubed of x minus cosine of x equals 0. Now I can factor out a cosine of x. And I get cosine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. Now we know that once you have you know, two values equal to 0, you can set them both equal to 0. And right, okay. so you have cosine of x equals 0 and cosine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, you add Ooh, you add the, for this one, so this one's already set. Here, you're going to add the 1, and you get cosine squared of x equals positive 1. Now we can get rid of the square root, or the square by square rooting. So we get cosine of x equals plus or minus 1. Don't forget the plus or minus 1. Huh? No, it's equal zero. Yes, it also equals zero over here. So now what we need to do is find our solutions. So let's go and take a look at our our circle again. And let's just take a look at when do our when do our values for cosine, remember cosine is gonna be your x value of your coordinate on the unit circle. So you could say So obviously here we have one and here we have negative one, right? Correct? Yeah. So the distance between these two is just going to be pi. We don't need to label both of them, right? We could just say 0 plus pi to get to the next one, right? So here we're going to say x equals pi n, right? If n was 0, it'd give you that point. If n was 1, it'd give you that point. If n was 2, it'd be 2 pi, right? Okay, but there's a restriction always to put n. Yo, I'm sorry. We're not doing restrictions. Thank you. I forgot. I was going back through it. So therefore, x is just going to be equal to 0 and um, pi. Thank you. I forgot. We are doing a different problem here. Um, and then when is cosine of x equal to 0? Well, when you look at it and you say, um, what we have here, we have um, this 0, 1, and this one 0, comma, negative 1. And those two points, x equals at um, pi over 2 and x equals n, 3 pi over 2. Got it? Because these are our four points that work. Does that make sense? Within our constraints, right? Make sense? Got it? Yay! <laughs>